Welcome to my lecture online. Before we deal a little bit more with densities and try to solve some more problems, let's get a better conceptual understanding of what density is and how the density of an object relates to the density of the liquid, especially in the case where the object floats in such a way that a portion of the object stays above the liquid. Now here we have a bunch of examples and let's assume that in all cases the density of the liquid stays the same which means that if a greater portion of the object sticks out of the liquid then the density of the object or the density of the block is going to be much less like this than when the object is almost completely submerged in the liquid then the density of the block will be greater so smaller density greater density for the block the greater the density of the block the more of the block will be suspended underneath the liquid because then the greater the buoyancy force you need in order to hold up the block. The greater the density, the heavier the block is going to be. But in all cases, the density of the block is going to be less than the density of the liquid. Now in this case, we have four-fifths of the block sticking out, one-fifth of the block inside the liquid, three-quarters sticks out, one-quarter inside the liquid, two-thirds sticks out, one-third is in the liquid, and so forth. So let's take a look and see if we can make a relationship between that. So we know that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which is equal to the mass of the liquid times g, and the mass can be written as the density times the volume. Now here, this is the volume of the displaced liquid, which in the first case is going to be one-fifth the volume of the block. So if one-fifth of the volume of the block is suspended underneath water, that means that only one-fifth of volume of the block is being displaced, and we can set that equal to the weight of the block. If we do that, notice that the g's cancel out, the volume of the block cancels out, which means that the density of the liquid times one-fifth equals the density of the block, or that the density of the liquid is five times the density of the block, or the density of the block is one-fifth the density of the liquid. So in case number one, so this would be case number one, case number two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now let's go ahead and see what that means. So in case number one, when four-fifths of the object sticks out, then we know that the density of the block is equal to one-fifth the density of the liquid, or the density of the liquid is equal to five times the density of the block. In case number two, we can then say that the density of the block is equal to one quarter the density of the liquid, or the density of the liquid is equal to four times the density of the block. In case number three, the density of the block is equal to one third the density of the liquid, or the density of the liquid is equal to three times the density of the block. In case number four, we can see that the density of the block is equal to one half the density of the liquid or the density of the liquid is equal to two times the density of the block. In case number five, the density of the block is equal to two-thirds the density of the liquid or the density of the liquid is equal to three halves the density of the block. That's a strange looking B. Let's try it again. There we go. In case number six, we can say that the density of the block is equal to three quarters the density of the liquid, or the density of the liquid is equal to four thirds the density of the block. And for the final case, case number seven, the density of the block is equal to four fifths the density of the liquid, or the density of the liquid is equal to five fourths the density of the block. And you can see that it's all about the portion of the block that's below the surface that enables us to make that relationship between the density of the block and the density of the liquid. And that is how we get that conceptual understanding of the buoyancy and the buoyancy force when you have an object that's partially afloat, partially submerged, partially afloat, I guess it is floating, but partially submerged to get that relationship between the density of the block and the density of the liquid. And that is how it's done.